Now let's talk about the second issue. What happens when we add a, like when two miners mine a block almost at the same time, well, let's say at the same time, right? Like that. So now all of a sudden we've got, um, We've got a conflict in the chain. How is this conflict going to be resolved? So let's have a look. This is this is really where the consensus protocol um, is like is at its best. This is very similar to the Byzantine fault tolerance that we talked about before. So uh, by Byzantine generals problem. This is the Byzantine fault tolerance, but this is very similar to the Byzantine generals problem. Okay. So what happens? Well. Um, this this uh, node, uh, this block, uh, since it's correct, we're going to assume that it's correct, there's no malicious intent or anything, it's going to be propagated through the network. So they're propagated or relayed through the network. So there we go. Um, it got uh, relayed to these nodes. They checked it, it checks and they accepted it. This one got relayed there. Um, and like we, we're just going to come up with like a, our own example scenario so in our example scenario maybe the connectivity here is faster so these got propagated first and then this one is maybe this like longer connection or something so by the time this one got there there's already some stuff happening here and then this one got here so basically the connection was here was faster here and um like the the information spread here faster than on this side so that's just for the purpose for argument's sake of course in real blockchains this is much huge much bigger this like um you know does it like tens and hundreds of thousands of nodes and uh then you know like when they're far away by the time they like the conflict happens it's not like two versus four it's it's a huge, much bigger number but this still conveys the point it'll help us understand better and so now what happens is this node uh, and these nodes are trying to like tell this node that okay add this orange block but this node is saying to these guys no you add the purple block and now here you see orange block Add the orange block and he's saying no add the purple block finally connections gone through so you can see we got an issue and this is here you should you can probably tell that it's very similar to that byzantine generals problem when you got conflicting messages going across the network um, so that's why we need byzantine fault tolerance okay and so what happens what's a consensus protocol in um in blockchains we remember with the generals their consensus protocol was to look at the average of what you're getting or the average of the messages that you're getting and then do that right so you know like um somebody's saying attack somebody's saying uh, retreat and then and then decide from there you know take not the average take like take the majority not yeah not the average the majority look at the majority of the messages that you're getting and then do that well in blockchain the consensus protocol is different in bro in blockchain what the nodes do uh, is they're like, okay, that's fine. So you've got a purple block. I've got an orange block. You know, like we, okay, we got two versions of the chain right now. So we've got competing chains. What we're going to do is we're going to wait and we're going to wait until another block is added. And once that block is added, then we'll see which of the two chains is longer. And so which chain basically adds a block first, you guys or us? Um, and then whoever adds a block first, that chain wins. So in blockchains, the the term or the saying is the longest chain is king. Whichever chain has the most blocks will eventually uh, win and replace the other chain. And the key here is that uh, the key here is that the part of the network that has the highest hashing power will eventually generate the longest chain and it's very easy to see in this example we can see that here we've got four computers and here we only have two and assuming they have the same hashing power for each computer so how hashing power is basically how many hash uh, hashes can you check per second you know how many hashes can he check and how can and they how many hashes can it check and it check and then you know together they have a hashing power and how many hashes can each one of these check and together they have hashing power assuming they have the same hashing power these guys have double the hashing power than these guys. So the orange chain is double the hashing power that, than the purple chain, which means that statistically speaking, these guys have a twice as high chance of finding the next, to, of solving the cryptographic puzzle first. So, so of solving their cryptographic puzzle, because all cryptographic puzzles are equal, you just need to find the hash for the block. So 
uh, these ones have a, so each one is working on their own, but if you add up the probabilities all together, overall, even if they're, you know, trying to add different blocks and so on, you know, like the, this one might have certain transactions, this one might have certain transactions, that doesn't matter. Overall, statistically speaking, this group of nodes has a high, much higher or double uh, chance of finding a next block or finding the next block in their chain, whatever it is, whatever, like coming up with a block to add to their chain because there's more hashing power. These guys have a lesser chance. And so what will happen statistically or probabilistically is one of the computers in the, one of the computers in the orange chain, let me just click here, there we go. One of the computers in the orange chain will come up with uh, a block. And then this block will be spread across the network. So bam, 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 across their part of the network. And then now is when this conflict will get resolved, is now we can see that uh, this uh, these nodes this network has a longer chain it's got two extra nodes this one only has one uh, blocks this one only has one extra block and so what will happen is these blocks will go to the side and the purple network will now adopt the orange network so the longest network is king and so right away the most important conclusion here is that uh, in a blockchain the consensus protocol uh, means that 50 those who have 51 percent of the hashing power or or just more than 50 percent of the hashing power that block that chain will win so in blockchain like un unlike the byzantine general's problem where remember we talked about like you, they cannot come to consensus even if there's 30 percent malicious uh or like traders here they will so in that case in that case they cannot come to a consensus they have to have like 70 plus on on the right on the 70 plus non traders or 70 plus agreeing generals to come to consensus in a blockchain it's it's better in a blockchain you only need 51 percent and that's from what we just discussed that it basically goes down to probabilities and hashing power so as long as you have more than 50 percent of the hashing power on one side agreeing more more than 50 percent of the hashing power coming to a consensus the blockchain will come to consensus so as you can see the consensus protocol in a blockchain is more powerful than the consensus protocol in the Byzantine generals problem. That's important to note that there you need 70%. In a blockchain, you need 50, 50 just over 50% in order to come to a consensus. That's very that's a very important feature, very important, pow powerful thing about blockchains. So where do, where do we stop? So yeah, so this conflict gets resolved. Uh, these blocks go to the side. And these blocks, you know, are actually now called orphan blocks orphaned blocks so let's do that there we go there's these are orphan orphan blocks and so unfortunately the the miner that mined this block in the first place their what happens is their transaction their the their reward is actually contained in that block it's in there it's not like they got they got paid in cash all the transactions and we'll talk about this more in module two they're actually in the blockchain so basically the reward won't be valid anymore uh, only this reward will be valid that that miner got and also the transactions that were in this block they're no longer valid so that's why it's important in a blockchain to actually wait until a couple of blocks are added to make sure that your transactions are have been accepted and then they're not, they're not going to be um they're not going to be they're not part of a competing chain that's going to lose so again we'll talk more about those things in module two of the course but for now this is what happens this is how the consensus protocol works and that's it. So, of course, after that, the blockchain goes to normal. Well, it is already a normal and, um, you know, new blocks are going to be mined and it's going to continue growing. So we've come to a consensus, basically. And so there we go. That uh, sums it up. Uh, our saga across the different realms of blockchain. We've discussed immutable ledger, distributed P2P networks, hash cryptography, mining, and finally consensus protocol. I really hope that now you have a good foundation. You can see, you can feel that you have a good foundation of blockchains and you feel confident in going into, I don't know, a debated, a heated debate uh, with uh, where people are talking about blockchains and you can maybe bring in the clarity and explain how things actually work and also that you're confident in uh, about going into the practical tutorials that are coming up very, very soon. And to finish off today's tutorial, uh, additional reading. Uh, this is really fun. 
Uh, you can actually read Satoshi Nakamoto's emails uh, to people like Hal Finney, Charles Jackson, Ray Dillinger, and James Donald, and a couple of others. So if you go to this website, again, this will be in the link, will be in the notes for the course. If you go there, you'll you'll be able to just go to the emails and click them and see what they said. And then this, this specific email, uh, which, yeah, which if you go to this link, you'll go to straight to this email. You'll see him talking about the Byzantine generals problem. <laughs> he, he puts it in a funny way through like hacking a Wi-Fi, but basically in the term, in the term of uh, blockchain. Uh, interesting short read. And as promised, the article about blockchain consensus protocols, it's a short one and just gives a high level overview of what other consensus protocols exist out there for blockchains, which can be also very useful. On that note, thank you so much for uh, being here and going through these uh, tutorials on uh, module one of blockchain. I look forward to seeing you back here next time. And until then, enjoy blockchains.